Yes, good evening. Welcome back to the channel. We have got one hell of a video today. One hell of a video. The Tottenham fan base has exploded on Twitter and all the socials. One of the number one trending tweets at the moment is Levy. We've got so much to get into. If you're enjoying the content, please go down and obliterate that like button. I'll tell you what, if we hit 500 likes on this video, I'll be absolutely gassed. And obviously, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, there's a lot of talking points on this video. We're going to be talking about the fact that Daniel Levy has, I guess you could say, taken away some season tickets. Daniel Levy's trending on Twitter due to Tottenham aren't prepared to go and make any superstar signings, or as I like to call them, marquee signings. And there's a bit of a shuffle up when it comes to the scouts. I believe one or two scouts will be leaving, and Johan Langer will be taking a complete grip of the Tottenham kind of transfer going forward, I guess you could say. But we're going to read a tweet that come out from the Spurs watch, and it's a quote of Fabrizio Romano and what he said. We're also going to be talking about a few other tweets from Fabrizio Romano too. So as I said, like the video and all that good stuff, let's jump straight into it. Now, this is Tottenham's summer strategy. Now, before we get into this, we've spoken about the fact that we need marquee signings on a number of occasions. And we've been linked to Danny Olmo, so I am going to make a video on that. But the quote says, I think not just stars for the future, but also solid players. I don't expect any superstars. We know Tottenham's strategy is different from this. So what do you determine a solid player? If you're looking at a solid player as a Mickey van der Ven, a James Madison, Destiny Dogi, Saar, by all means, keep them coming. Or do you look at a solid player in terms of the Conor Gallagher's, the Brennan Johnson's, the Richarlison's? It's very subjective. What do you get to decide what a solid player is? That's the first part I want to talk about. The second part, the strategy of Spurs is to sign two, three, four different players rather than one superstar. That is the clear project of the club. Now, this tweet here has sent the Tottenham world into a meltdown, right? We need to analyse this. Does that essentially mean Tottenham want quantity over quality? Potentially, yes, it does. However, you need to caveat in saying, even when we've brought in quantity like the summer, when we brought through Brennan Johnson, we brought through... You know, James Madison, good signing. Mickey van der Ven, good signing. Vicario, good signing. We can make that potentially a positive, but a lot of the Tottenham fans have just taken that as typical Daniel Levy. We're gonna, we're not going to go and sign the marquee players. I think Tottenham need a balance. And I've said this, and I've said this recently with the video I put out a couple of days ago, Tottenham can't make this mistake again. We can't. The summer, we need marquee signings. You can make marquee signings and not necessarily sign a superstar. I would argue James Madison is a marquee signing. I would argue Mickey van der Ven is a marquee signing. You probably couldn't say that Vicario and Dragoose are marquee signings. They're probably more the quantity over quality, you know, but they've still made an impact. But the, the Tottenham fan base, I mean, our fan base, we, we love a moan. We love a, a rant. We love a you know, a meltdown. But from this tweet, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. The transfer window is a couple of months away. We've got the Euros coming up. We've got a very busy couple of months. Big Premier League games, Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal City, et cetera, et cetera. But my God, the meltdown is unbelievable. Like... Yes, I get we, we we need serious change. I understand that. We need, you know, that Ange Postacoglu has said that he wants changes at this football club. Ange Postacoglu has said that, you know, Ange Postacoglu has said he wants to challenge. He wants to win trophies. For Richie Romano, via the Spurs chat podcast, which I believe 
is Chris Cowlin's channel. This is what he said on there as well. Tottenham's mission is to get business done as early as possible this summer for the majority of the names they have in mind as positions they want to cover. I think we could see three or four signings for Tottenham. Now, three or four signings for Tottenham for me is not the quantity. That is quality. Most teams make three or four signings. Now, that I read that as if you say Tottenham are going to go out and sign two players of around 50 million like we did in the summer. Uh, like we, yeah, with with James Madison and Vicky Van der Ven, and then we'll bring in maybe two other players of about thirty mil. That's kind of the way I read that. But once again, from this tweet, everyone's gone berserk. Like, don't get me wrong, this is probably Daniel Levy's biggest summer transfer window in a good number of years. There's a lot of factors happening in the next six to twelve months. You've got Jurgen Klopp leaving Liverpool. You've got Chelsea potentially sacking Pochettino. There's rumours now Guardiola could leave Man City. In order for Tottenham to put our name amongst the, the big boys, we've got to go and spend £150, £200 million pounds this summer. Now, I get the frustration from fans coming out saying it's Daniel Levy again, it's typical Tottenham, blah, 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 blah. I understand that. However, if we have another window like we did in the summer and then maybe add one or two more players of quality, we'll be absolutely fine. We'll be absolutely fine. The one thing I don't agree with, and I do want to dive, move away just for a couple of minutes, is that I don't know how legit it is, but there's a rumour going around that Daniel Levy and Tottenham have scrapped the over 65 season ticket, which I think is nothing short of a disgrace. One of the most profitable football clubs in the world is scrapping over 65 season tickets. I disagree with that. Like, I don't, I don't think that's right, but that's just my opinion. Moving back to the, the big changes. Now, there's going to be plenty of scouts that are leaving. Johan Lang has taken over complete football operations in terms of transfers. Michael Edwards has been at the club. We'll start off with... Uh, Charlie Eccleshare and Jack Pitbrook have said Tottenham are letting go of Ian Broomfield, Augusto Benito and Colin Jackson, three of the club's longest serving scouts as part of an ongoing restructuring of their football staff. And the reason we're doing this apparently is purely because Johan Langer wants to go down the data approach and he is taking complete charge of Tottenham's transfers going forward. So that was a bit of a big bombshell. I believe Ian Broomfield is one of the longest serving scouts at the football club. Interesting. He then goes on to say, big up to the Spurs Express because these guys are relentless with news. Ian Broomfield is, is amongst the longest mer uh, members of the recruitment staff who are leaving Tottenham as the club overhauled their recruitment staff to continue moving towards a data-driven Talent spotting model, and that is coming out from Sammy Mockbell. So, massive changes at Tottenham, humongous changes in terms of the transfer strategy, in terms of the recruitment staff, and in terms of going down the data driven talent spotting model. So, like, there, there's a lot of changes coming to the football club in the short, uh, short time of potentially bringing in new scouts. Now, Johan Langer, this is coming out from Sammy Mockbell as well, and he has said Johan Langer is known to be an advocate of data-driven approach with regards to identifying future targets, and Spurs are understood to be modernizing their recruitment approach, which will see changes made to recruitment staff. It's going to be an interesting summer, guys. You know, if we, if we try to go down the kind of Brighton, Brentford kind of route in terms of identifying players, bringing them into the football club. It's going to be interesting. I, I, I do think you might see kind of what, what Brighton do in, in these five, seven million pound signings who turn out to be world beaters like Casado, you know, make, make these consistent smart signings. Brighton don't really go out there. They're not a club that go out there and sign the 50, 60 million pound signings. And I guess you could probably say that's right, but Unless you have an unbelievable scouting network, it's very difficult to compete with the big boys without going and spending the same money as the big boys. You look at Arsenal, 100 million on Declan Rice, 65 million on Kai Havertz. 
Liverpool, 60 million on Sobers, like 100 million euros on Darwin Nunes, Man City, you know, whatever they've spent in the last three or four years. Chelsea's one billion pound expenditure. Manchester United are probably going to go out and do 200 million in the summer. It's going to be very hard if we want to compete with everyone, but we're not necessarily going to do that because we're going down a more data, you know, talent spotting model system. And yes, that can work, but the recruitment has got to be spot on. Like it has to be very, very accurate in terms of the profile, in terms of the the player we want to bring in for each position. Now, Sammy Motbo has been very active today and he said, Michael Edwards is understood to have paid a visit to Hotspur Way last month whilst working with Ludon Aquatics, I think that is, before he signed with Fenway Sports Group. Ludon Aquatics are in the midst of approaching a number of European clubs about implementing their data systems, though it cannot be confirmed as the time was his exact reason for paying a visit to the club's headquarters. Now, of course, Michael Edwards, I believe, has just joined, is it Liverpool, as the director of football? So he's very, very good, apparently. So that's going to be an interesting an interesting kind of potential that the way we're going to act in the summer market. Now, Chris Cowlin's uh, channel yesterday had Fabrizio Romano on it, and he said there's a lot of interest uh, in Brian Hill around Europe. He could leave Tottenham if the right offer arrives for a permanent transfer. The player didn't want to go out alone on January, but only wants to move if a good moves opportunity, a, uh, sorry, if it's a good opportunity and a permanent transfer. I look at it and think Brian Hill, it's not worked out, is it? Let's just call a spade a spade. It hasn't worked out for the guy. Let, let, let's just be honest on that. Now, when you look at the summer window coming up, if Brian Hill leaves, if Giovanni Lo Celso leaves, if this player or that player leaves, which potentially probably will be Hoiberg as well, Tottenham will probably bring in around 50, 60, maybe 70 million pounds in terms of incomings to put towards our transfer budget. You know, Brian Hill has never really made an impact on Spurs, in my opinion. You know, he, he's technically sound on the ball. He can do a lot of the things we need in terms of his dribbling ability and taking players on, but his overall physicality is one of the reasons why it hasn't worked out in the Premier League. But you probably could command a 30 million euro fee for someone like Brian Hill. One of the Spanish clubs will pay for it. You then got the likes of Hoiberg as well. You could probably potentially get 15, 20, 25, maybe 25 million euros for him. Then you've got Giovanni Lo Celso. One of the Spanish clubs probably will pay another 20 million euros. You could quite easily command 60, 75 million euros. Then you've got the likes of Jaffet Tanganga. Then you've got potentially Emerson Royale. He's being linked to a move away. It's going to be a very interesting... Very interesting few months in the Spurs transfer market in terms of who we bring in and who we don't bring out. But what I'm going to say is be prepared for to be linked with names that you've never heard of, like Goodmanson the other day, like Edison from Atalanta. If Tottenham want to go down this data approach, like it's going to be painful, you know, when everyone's going out there and signing juggernauts. Of, of European football, it's going to be painful. I'm not going to deny that. But we just got our... We just have to trust this. Like, I don't know what else I can, uh, more I can say. Like, I've been happy with the recruitment under Ange Postacoglu. I don't necessarily think signing a lot of the data kind of analysed players will work out in the short run. I think the longer run, it probably will. But Ange Postacoglu... You know, has come here to win major honours. I don't necessarily think he's going to want to stick around four or five years and not win anything. Next year, I expect Tottenham to take the the domestic trophies a little bit more serious than we did this year. Our performance against Fulham was nothing short of a disgrace. Against Manchester City, we were pretty toothless. Like, the club have got to figure out which direction they want to go in. And it does look like we want to take the data approach, but there's going to be a lot of uproar in the fan base if we're not going out and spending 50, 60 million pounds on a couple of players in the summer and it, and it, and we look at 15, 20 million buys or five or 10 million euro buys here or there. There's going to be a lot of uprest uh, and uproar in the family, uh, in the family, in the fan base. I can see it a mile away. 
I, I really can. It's going to be an interesting transfer window. It really is. You know, major changes at Spurs this summer. And Ange Postacoglu, you know, apparently wants, wants the challenge. But Romano's coming out saying we're not going to expect any superstars. So think of that what you will. I'll see you all soon in the next one. Thank you all for watching. I am.